students so today we will be going more in depth into our HTTP basics uh, last time also we discussed a uh, few of the things related to HTTP based, uh, basics like get and post in HTTP request and what are the cookies and everything but today we will be going uh, more in depth so we will be also discussing what are the other HTTP methods apart from get and post and also what are the request and response headers what is the meaning of these headers and everything and in case time allows, uh, we'll be also going through the HTTP status codes as well. So let's start. Uh, we'll be referring to one of the rooms uh, on Try Hack Me, uh, HTTP in detail. So uh, this web fundamentals we have already completed. We'll be going through the HTTP in detail room now. So let's start. Uh, so this is actually a sample website given with the, this particular room only. Okay so yeah we'll uh, this these basics we have already discussed that what is http it's hypertext transfer pro protocol uh, what is https it's a secure version of http only and in https if the website is using https whatever uh, data is being transferred between our browser and between the site or the server you can say that would be encrypted so even if someone is list, uh, listening on our network or in between uh, they won't be able to decrypt the data so that's all uh, the HTTPS is nowadays most of the website are using HTTPS because HTTP is not secure so uh, the first question we have right here is what does HTTP stands for we can just directly copy and paste uh, the answer here to complete this what does the S stands for in the HTTPS so that is secure actually and it's saying on the mockage mock web page on the right hand side we have a issue click on it what is the challenge flag okay so here if you see there is nothing much here that we can see here also in the URL but here we have a uh, lock that is not secure actually when you click on it you get our flag so it only means that this website is not secure that's all because it is on HTTP and we can see that the lock is not turned on so that means it's not safe so now moving on to the second part we are done with the, this uh, just the basics we have already discussed last time as well so now moving on to the uh, request and responses so this is now actually a bit more in detail you can say compared to last time so normally what you see whenever we are talking about now the urls okay i'm not going to read the whole content here but i will just explain what it is so what is a url okay like whenever on browser you access something like this right https google.com this is an url okay which stands for uniform resource locator so if we will try to debug or like uh, uh, segregate all the parts of uh, url and understand what every part of a url means okay so the first part it could be http or https which basically means that whether the website is uh, secure or not okay like whether the data between our browser and the website is uh, encrypted or not that's all now after that this part you normally don't see actually user colon password at the rate actually it's a basic authentication uh, mechanism most of the time you won't see it right now here as well when you open this right we don't see that uh, part before it at the rate okay and it's not uh, required most of the time but uh, in future maybe if we come across a website that requires authentication in advance like to access that particular website itself you we provide username colon password at the rate then the website name what actually means is i'm not sure if you have seen it okay uh, but uh, let's let's see if we can find an image uh, for that one uh, that particular authentication basic authentication pop-up so when you access a particular website okay a pop-up would occur okay yeah i hope every one of you have seen a pop-up like this whenever you open a website right a pop-up comes up uh, from the top and it asks for username and password okay now one way is you can put the username and password directly like this okay another way is you can put the username colon password at the rate and the website name and then you if you try to access it's if the username and password is valid it's not going to ask you uh, it's not going to show you that pop-up because you 
provided the uh, valid username and password and it will uh, allow you to access that website so this is actually a kind of a basic authentication you can uh, http authentication you can see uh, most of the time you won't see in the urls because it's not required but sometimes when you see uh, when you access some urls there will be a pop-up on top and you can uh, do one thing you can provide username password in that pop-up or you can provide it in this way uh, and after at the rate you can mention that url or website okay whichever you want to access so this is uh, actually a kind of uh, providing username and password to uh, to uh, authentication mechanism okay so this is what it is then we have our main website name uh, like host or domain name or website name also some people call it in uh, lemon language then after colon we have a port number okay we already discussed about ports in brief that ports are nothing but uh, gates to a server okay now no, when the website is on http the port is mostly 80 only okay when the website is on https the port is 443 by default okay now there are a lot of ports it could change but most of the time for http it's 80 and https it would be 443 okay so the port number is mentioned here okay and um, uh, in in other cases you may see some other ports as well like 8000 that means that uh, we are trying to access the website on that particular port okay of uh, like for uh, i'm just giving an example for example we have https like this is google.com and by default we we don't see here port because uh, it is because we have mentioned https in the beginning by default it will load uh, the website that is running on 443 port only okay even if you mention it like this you can see that you see the same thing but sometimes it is also possible to run different website on the same domain name on different ports for example on the google.com itself there could be another website running on 8000 port okay it's not going to return anything it, i hope but right now you can see that it's trying to load so what it means that on the same website name on different ports different websites can run okay so by default when you access uh, it like this without mentioning any port and you mention https okay it, it is accessing the port 443 okay even if you put it it's going to access the google.com https website only okay but if you specifically mention a port then it's going to try to access the website running on that port for that particular website or domain name you can say so that's what the port is after that you have a path so let's let's uh, I'll, yeah this example only you can see in the url right so here this is actually the path okay so whatever uh, is there after the main domain name after the slash that is actually the path okay so like uh, on this website we have a room and within that we have a http in detail page okay so that's the past path and then sometimes you will see some url parameters i hope most of you are already clear about it but these like additional values like uh, variables that is assigned to it okay like id equals to one and user equals to test these kind of things right these are actually url parameters or you can call these query string as well okay and now whatever comes after hash actually that is actually a fragment okay um i'm not sure if i can show you the example of fragment but uh, it's nothing but uh, for example sometimes when you are opening a web page and there is a uh, link in the page that click here to access uh, some other content okay and when you click on it what happens the page automatically scrolls down and goes to a particular topic for example uh, suppose uh, there this making a request okay suppose there was a link here making a request and we click on it and it automatically scrolls down to making a request part okay so a reference to a, a particular content within the page you can mention using hash okay so yeah that's what a fragment is now yeah all these parts are explained here as well yeah and this fragment is also given that uh, it is a reference to a location on the actual page requested only and this is uh, commonly used on the pages where we have long content so that when you click on a particular link it will automatically scroll down to that particular part okay uh, i will show you i am so this now i hope we find a long page here
it's taking a lot of time uh, leave it um, okay so I'm not sure like whatever links takes you to another page that's not a uh, uh, what uh, how should I put it that's not a fragment okay but whatever links scroll down the page and takes you to another like uh, other content on the same page only those are actually fragments so after hash whatever is there that is a fragment okay now we'll just understand making a request more in depth last time we just saw or looked at the request that looks uh, looked like this but now we'll understand what is every part of it okay so in the beginning uh, this get okay this is HTTP method uh, this same thing we discussed last time at, as well so just uh, it's HTTP methods are just a way of telling the server what kind of request or what kind of action we want the server to perform okay after that we have the path okay so this part in the URL that path would be mentioned okay the path is not going to contain the whole thing okay because this is the path only this is actually the host or domain okay so this is not going to be mentioned here after HTTP method there is a space then a path only then HTTP 1.1 so HTTP what is HTTP 1.1 uh, it's a HTTP protocol version only so uh, we are not going to go into more depth but there are different versions of HTTP as well like 1.0 1.2 uh, most of the uh, website that you will see nowadays though would be running on 1.1 and 1.2 okay so in the request you will see that it is sending HTTP slash 1.1 or 1.2 okay so a, a simple request looks like this okay now we are going to uh, segregate all of these parts and we will understand what is the meaning of it so this is the HTTP method this is the path that we are trying to access on the web page or the site this is the HTTP version then these all are okay that is having a uh, colon right these are request headers okay so the host header is going to contain the main domain name okay so this is tryhackme.com okay now from this part so far what we understand that this request is asking for get request get mostly means that give me the page okay so it is mostly asking for the main page of uh, tryhackme because there is nothing under the path it's only the slash slash means the main page only so most probably it is asking for like this okay this is what it is asking for if we had get space slash test that means it it is asking for try hack means slash test okay so yeah so it's trying to access that page then we have a user agent it mostly means that from what browser or from which way we have issued this get request okay so if we are loading it from chrome there would be some data related to chrome here like the name of chrome and something like that but if it is Mozilla then we will see something like this okay and if you are issuing it from uh, some command line uh, utility like curl we discuss then we will have something related to curl as well okay so yeah you can see here that line 3 means that we are telling the server we are using the Firefox version 87.0 right so that's what user agent is okay then we have a referral okay referral uh, you can uh, understand from the uh, simple concept that uh, suppose you install a, uh, a particular mobile application and you refer to someone else right you refer uh, to your friend so for your friend you are the referrer okay the same thing here is that whatever URL is mentioned here under the referrer okay that means that we are telling the web server that the web page that referred us to this one is this one for example uh, suppose we we open this particular website okay and uh, this is dashboard right now if you go to learn okay let me see if uh, it's going to show here in our uh, developer tools I opened it and we are looking at the network what is what is the request that is being sent when we go to learn section okay so we went to learn learn section under the okay activities you can see uh, in the request uh, let's see yeah see un under the request we can see the reference is mentioned as tryhackme.com dashboard so it means that we we are referred from this URL to this current URL activities okay like the the URL before it was this slash dashboard so yeah that's what it is that 
whenever you move to another page okay the previous url would be considered as a uh, referrer okay that's what it is and then this is a get request so what you can do you can keep a empty line it's it's not required but most of the time there would be an empty line after it okay so that i tells the server that the request has ended here okay so after the get as well there would be an empty line to tell the server that the request has ended and now process this request okay so now what the server is going to do when you send this particular request okay i will i will uh, let's see if we can send it from burp suit okay in burp suit we have not discussed the all the functionality of burp suit so far uh, but let's see if uh, we can uh, just do this particular thing okay so to do it like if you want to send a particular requ request you can go to repeater okay so from here you can send the request and in the request part you paste it and let's try to send it it's going to ask you that where do you want uh, this request to send okay so uh, our host name is this one only right so we will put it here and the port is 443 only okay and we can check this one as well okay now if we send it you can see we got some response in raw okay in the raw http format only if you click on render button it's going to render that in in a uh, like a browser only okay so see when we click on the render it rendered all the content that is written here in in uh, like uh, in proper format or like we, we design and everything so this is actually the page that is, that we get whenever we are sending a try uh, get request to try hack me on this root part this is the main page of try hack me okay so yeah this is how using the repeater functionality of burp suit you can send it we will be discussing uh, burp suit in detail in later sessions but i just wanted to show you how you can send a request okay so yeah that that's all about it and here it showed us a uh, just a simple rep response that we may get when we are sending a request like this okay here if you see in the burp suit we get a lot of data here but uh, here uh, they have explained only the main important things only okay so we'll discuss this part for the time being uh, the later part we'll be discussing in future sessions okay so what it means the first part again it's the http version used then we have a http status code okay that is 200 means uh, a, we, we discussed a bit about http status codes in last sessions on, also like what are, what is the meaning of stat status codes that starts with two uh, that is in between 200 and 299 so that mostly means that a success suc it was a successful uh, request and we got the response okay so that's 200 means a success so in in between 200 and 299 as well we have different uh, status codes so whenever it's 200 we will receive a okay okay so that's what it is also we have a response header called server column so that actually means what is what uh, so what is this uh, software the server is running to run that particular website so that is nginx sometimes you will see apache okay so it could be different but yeah this is important information based on this we could uh, like it's kind of getting more information about our target website and using these information sometimes attacker could uh, like fine tune their attacks okay because we now know that whether it's nginx server or it's apache server so it, it is utilized for that as well okay then we have a date it will uh, normally mean that at what time and what uh, particular date uh, the response is uh, returned okay so the current day time and everything of the web server then we have content time now this is important actually content time normally me means that in what type of uh, data the, the response is returned okay so when it is text slash html means the response contains html code okay so there are different content types okay there are there is uh, i'm not sure if you are aware of application slash json json but it's also a kind of format of data okay so the type of the data that is being returned it is mentioned under the content type okay and whatever the length of this data is in bytes okay that would be mentioned under content length okay so uh, 
each character is uh, considered as one byte so this whole how many characters are there okay including I guess spaces just a moment yeah how long the response is okay and it will be always uh, it is used actually to check whether some data is missing from this response or not for example if it is 98 and in the response we have 97 bytes only it's going to be a the browser will understand that someone messed up the data in between okay like someone was messing with our data uh, when we got the response from the website to our browser okay so that's why it is also sent in the request and then after there's a empty line here to show that uh, the headers are finished after that whatever content is there okay that is actually called the response body okay and this is you can see it's a html code so if, if we try to uh, decode it a little bit it means that on the title of the website it would be try hack me and in the body we will normally see that welcome to try hack me.com okay so that's what it is written here that it is the code for the page that we have requested okay which means that when we requested for the main page the content of that page was this one only okay but uh, it's just an example it's not the exact one exact one you can see here that the whole response is uh, this long okay like this this is where the headers stopped there is an empty line and then this whole code this is an HTML code it's pretty long so that whole code is the uh, HTML code you can say for uh, the main page of tryhackme.com okay so yeah that, that's all about uh, this part now uh, it's asking us what HTTP protocol is being used in the above example so this example it was HTTP 1.1 only so we will put that directly here and what response header tells the browser how much data to expect so when from the server when the data like response comes to the browser we have this content length that will tell the browser how much data is coming so that is what we have to mention here okay so we are done with the request and responses whatever we send to the server that is request whatever comes from the response uh, whatever comes in response that is our responses and these parts okay these are headers that is having a colon so these are actually called request headers in the response the part where we have these columns and everything uh, these part are response headers okay and whatever is there after the empty line that is the response body and in the request as well uh, whatever comes after the uh, empty line that is the request body but in get request there is no use of sending the uh, request body okay that's how it works in post request you will see that some body is being sent after the empty line but in get request it's not required okay so that's how it is now coming on to the HTTP methods last time we discussed about get request only and we also saw that how you can trigger get and post using uh, curl as well and how uh, you can read uh, the return cookies how you can set a cookie using curl as well so those uh, things we discussed right now we are discussing more HTTP requests here uh, HTTP methods my bad so in, in short if we tell uh, what are HTTP methods okay these are like kind of instructions that we are giving to server what we want okay so most of the time when we send a get request it mostly means that we are asking the server to provide us the information for example when we load HTTP as google.com it's sending a get request to google.com server and asking for the web page okay the page of google.com so that's a get request like we are asking it to provide us the information so that's what a get request is post we discussed last time as well that mostly it is used to submit some data from client side to the server side or from browser side to the website side so whenever some login is there right we we took an example of this particular website that if you go to sign up and here if you put some data and if you click on login okay then the username and password it will be sent in a post request to the server so to send some data to server most of the time uh, the post request will be used then we have a put request okay 
it is mostly used to update the information for example if I click here and if I log in okay I will press F12 to see uh, our developer tools here we are listening in the network tab and here see I will try to update my data update it okay so it's not actually required that to update information you always have to use put only but most of the time uh, the put will be used but it completely depends on the website okay how they have developed their functionality on the server so whether they have used uh, like whether they have written the code to accept post for update functionality whether they have uh, written the fun uh, code to accept a put to update some particular data it depends on the website only here you can see that when we updated the data it sent a post request to this particular endpoint and in the request you will see under the payload section it sent all of this data right so it's a post request but most of the time you will see the put request okay so put request is mostly used to update the information of a particular record on the server okay there is one more request that is patch actually and there is a very thin difference between put and patch okay which is really important to understand both the HTTP methods are used to update the records only but if you see let's see if we have any image here no it's it's not working okay so what is the difference between put and patch okay whenever you use put method to update a particular record okay it's going to update the whole record okay for example uh, sometimes what happens uh, suppose there is a record where you have first name last name email id phone number okay and you send a put request with the data updating only the first name okay so in that case what will happen the server if you are not sending the rest of the data okay server could uh, update rest of the data as empty okay because you didn't send the data and put whenever you send it will update the whole record so sometimes it happens that when uh, suppose the whole the record that is there on the server is like first name okay then you have last name that is rider then you have email that is like this okay then you have phone number that is like like this okay and you send a put request with the data like first is now my um, first name is rider now okay but what it will lead to it may lead to data on the server being updated like this okay like empty then email as empty and it actually happened uh, with me on one of the site that I, I was testing on so I only send the first name as Tom and use put as HTTP method and the, all the other data when I went to my my bad the phone number would be also empty when I went to my profile I, I was seeing that the all the other data is empty but only the first name is there okay but that also depends on the website how they are uh, using put but this is what a put means okay put mostly updates the whole record okay it's not necessary that all the other data would become empty but in case it becomes empty you understand that the main reason for that is you are using a put method okay now in the same case if you use patch okay this is also used to update the record only but when you send some data with patch it's going to only update the part that you are mentioning to it okay so in this case if you are sending that first name is rider now on the server it will only update the first name only and the rest of the data would be same so in that case if you send the request so this was the data on server before we sent the request once we sent a patch request with data like this first uh, that the first name is now rider the only first part would change and the rest of the data would remain same okay so that is the difference between put and patch put updates the whole record and patch would update only the data that you are sending to it okay it is not mentioned here but i just wanted to mention it then we have a delete request okay it's from the name itself we can understand that uh, for example uh, you have an account on facebook.com okay 
and this is what the URL looks like and then your ID is something like this okay Tom Rider this is your URL on Facebook now there is an option to delete your Facebook profile so when you click on the delete button okay most of the time if you go and look in the your developer tools okay you will see that a request is being sent this is not the exact path that Facebook uses I'm just giving an example uh, that Facebook will be sending a delete request to some of its internal path okay and a delete STDB method would be used so what that will do that will delete the whole record from the database so that's why we use delete okay it is also used uh, for example uh, when you remove your profile picture from whatsapp right so in the backend as well the delete method is used to remove the picture okay um, also when you change your profile picture okay in that case also it may happen that they are first deleting your old picture then they are updating it so first sending a delete request okay on the profile uh, endpoint and then they are sending a uh, patch or put to update your profile picture okay so that may also happen so this is what the other HTTP methods are uh, we last time discussed only about this but yeah these put patch and delete are also important so what method would be used to create an account mostly you can say whenever we create a new account a lot of data like our name first name email and everything goes to the server so most of the time you will see that post method is used to send the data if you want to update your email address then it is put okay because our, for updation we have put and patch only and here it was on asking for only three characters answer so yeah the answer is put what method you can use to remove your profile picture right so that I already give an example on oh, my bad it's delete so that's the right answer what method would be used to view a news article so when you click like on like show me this news or uh, buttons like that right or like view post these kind of things so that's asking for the data from server so most of the time it would be get only so that's what it is so yeah th that's all for today uh, any questions so far